We are talking women's basketball with you here, Charlotte 49ers women's hoops, Ryan Rose, and that's Gary Kinswager, our head coach. Welcome back. Thanks, Ryan. Uh, year two for you, so kind of a fun time, and let's talk to some of your seniors as well. We've got Jay Forney, Jennifer Haley, a couple of these seniors. Now, you are on Twitter. You're one of the one of the few head coaches that decided, let's just take the plunge. C at C. Consuegra, that is a, a note to you people to get out there and follow, at C. Consuegra. Let's talk about that a little bit. You're your Twitter uh, experience so far and the kinds of things that you like to tweet about from your account. Well, I enjoy it. It's a fun way for me to be able to interact with fans and the community and players and recruits. And so the whole aspect of it for me is fun to just have a personal touch and be able to, you know, I really use it to talk about the team and what's going on in our lives. And yesterday I, I tweeted about practice and what's been good, what we need to work on. And Again, just to add a personal touch to our program here. Kind of a neat thing for people to directly interact with you because even five, ten years ago, they're really inside of going to events. There wasn't a way to actually reach out to the coach. Play, you keep track of your players. They keep track of your account. It's kind of a neat thing, I think, for the interaction between fan and Oh, and I agree. Coach. That's one of my favorite parts. When I get a mention or somebody uh, direct messages me or whatever, just being able to get back to them and, and talk about what's going on and thank them for the support. It's really fun. We've seen a lot about the uh, the preseason boot camp these ladies went through, and I know it's something that, that you instilled last year. Uh, let's talk about, ladies, let's talk about everything that goes into from the last game of last season all the way to the opening game this year against North Carolina Central. Jay, let's talk about what you've gone through personally since the end of last year and the things you've decided to work on and improve. Shooting, ball handling, decision making, being more aggressive, all it, all in one. And hopefully that will help the team at large because you're one of the primary ball handlers. And then we talk about post play, and Jen Haley is, I mean, that's what you're known for around here is post play. We'll talk about the speed and the way you have to play as a big in just a second, but let's talk about your personal experience since the end of last season. What sorts of things have you worked on uh, to improve your game and help the team? I've been working on free throws. I was terrible at it last year, but also I've been working on my footwork, trying not to walk so much this year. Okay. Now, do do we work on her getting fouled, or that what do you, what can you do to help get yourself to the free throw line? Well, I think with Jen, it happens naturally because okay. she's just such a great force in the paint and uh, in practice. We don't really call a lot of fouls for her, to be honest, because we want her to be able to finish, regardless if the foul is called or not. So it's. I know sometimes that causes some frustration from her to me in practice, but we're trying to get her prepared that regardless, she's going to make the shot, and then if she ends up at the free throw line, great. Let's make sure you've put your time in so that you're able to knock those shots down. And hopefully you only shoot half as many because that means you're only shooting one, which means you made the bucket. <laughs> yeah, right. Now, I do want to, not to pick on you at all, but I want to talk about the speed of women's basketball. In the last 10 years, the game has become really fast-paced, which means the centers have to move. You can't just hang out on one end of the court. And between you and Amanda Dow, talk about the transition from high school to college and the speed of the game for, for you girls who have to play in the paint. Well, in high school, it was a little slow because, I mean, you did what you wanted to do in high school. But, like, in college, it's a lot different because it's up-tempo. Everything's moving fast, so you got to be able to move up and down the court. That's uh, probably a shock when you get here in the first yeah. practice. It's run, 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 run. Yeah. Oh, wait, when do I get a ball? I mean, when am I going <laughs> to lay it up? But for players like Jay, I mean – you got to have those people in front of you when you're directing traffic in transition. That's probably the most fun for you is to watch these big girls fly by, catch, lay up, boom, we're going back, play defense. She do that, I really don't have to do much. <laughs> <laughs> I just look up, oh, there's Jen. Just throw the ball. I know she's going to finish. Now, let's talk a little about the preseason and camps and, and getting the team ready. People think basketball is just it starts in November and it ends in, in April. Uh, but not true for a team like this, working out constantly year-round, boot camp, training camp. Let's talk about all the things that go into getting ready for a season. Well, we really had a frank conversation when our season ended. and We got, got together in, in April as a group, and this was prior to our freshmen joining us for this year, and talked about where we want to be next season, what our expectations are, and that needed to start today, then mm -hmm. back in April. Right. And I think that this group really has embraced that, they had a really good spring where we worked on uh, a lot of different things, but certainly getting stronger in the weight room and some different fundamental flaws that we saw in our game as a whole last year. They had a tremendous summer. I think they worked very hard as a group, which was exciting for me and my coaching staff. And then this fall, again, that has really continued. Uh, there's an urgency to this group, which is exciting. And I have to credit these two to my left and certainly Amanda Dow, another one of our seniors, part of that. 
we have a senior group that wants to go out on a very high note. They want to do very well. And they brought that urgency with them in every workout all the time. And you can feel it, and it's trickling down among the team. So it's been exciting. Well, let's talk about the freshmen, too. I want to get your evaluation on the newcomers as you guys have worked. You know, those girls had to come in kind of ready and to fit in, and boom, we're going. Jay, what can you say about the young players on the team and, and uh, their improvement since they've gotten here? Well, me personally, I'm excited because I've seen where they came from when they first got here to where they are now. I mean, they, like she said, that they, they see our urgency. They, they're watching, they're learning, and it's just exciting because it's like I was there. Like, I, I see where you at, and I know we can go. So it's exciting. Isn't it strange, though, with the fact if you think about to the first day back when you got here to today, now there are no older players to look up to. Yeah. Jen, just you being one of the, the players that now you're kind of the coach on the floor or the, the older player that they're looking up to, is that kind of strange? Yeah, it is, because when I first got here, like, I had other people to look up to. Now it's like I got people looking up to me. So it, it feels it feel weird, but it's a good thing. Leadership's a strange thing. You don't know yeah. when you get here if you've got it within you. Some players, they start leading as freshmen, sophomores. Some players, it comes out late. Um, that's probably got to be the biggest challenge as a coach is to find who those leaders are, identify them, and have them help the team mature through the course of the year. It's got to be a, got to be the toughest thing for you. Absolutely. It's crucial. It's crucial to any team. And certainly uh, when you talk about leadership, senior leadership is essential. And like I said, I couldn't be more pleased with these two that I have with me. Uh, but we started working on it again back in April. It's not mm -hmm. something that you can just turn it on and off right now. We can't expect Jen and Jay all of a sudden because they're seniors to know how to lead. Um, they've got to want it, which they do. But at the same time, we, it's our responsibility as coaches to help them with that. And so we have formed a leadership council on our team, which includes our three seniors, plus two of our point guards, Nye Hammonds and Ayana Holmes. And the five of us, we, we meet and we talk about what does it mean to be a leader? Uh, what is your role going to be? Uh, when do you need to step up? When do you need to kind of back off? What do you need to say? How do you need to say it? And different ways of just teaching them what it takes to be a great leader. And I think that we've really seen the fruits of that so far, so it's exciting. Let's talk about uh, your second year. Um, let's, let's start from this point and reverse back all the way to when you got here in April. What kind of things did you learn last season about yourself that you didn't know that might be helpful for you here in year two? Well, it's certainly year one is a, a learning year all the way around, and I think I learned a lot about myself as a person. Um, I just want to be the most consistent coach that I can, both – uh, off the court, on the court, I want my players to always know where I stand and who I am and just working through the first year of that and getting them to get to know me. Um, even though on the court I might be a little more intense than I am off the court, uh, that's really important to me and I kind of I learned that as I went. I think another uh, really big thing I learned is to just be patient. I think when you become a first year coach, you want them to know everything all the time, you know, right away mm -hmm. and to be able to understand what we want and, and execute it on the court and it takes time. Uh, and you have to be patient. You have to be able to change your teaching sometimes to be able to reach players differently. And that's something that I say was maybe the biggest thing that I learned, that patience is okay. And if they don't understand it right away, that's okay. It takes time, and, and eventually you'll get there. Now, one important thing for you coming into a new program with players that you didn't recruit, that you kind of have to recruit your own team to start with, you have to learn them first, is them buying into what you want to do. Also important is turnover of staff. You had a few people that were here, so they had familiar faces they could identify with. How important was it for those upperclassmen, those juniors last year and seniors, to kind of buy into what you were trying to sell them and you guys getting together on the same page quickly? Well, it's absolutely crucial to any team. It doesn't matter if you're in your first year or your tenth year. If you don't have your best players or you don't have your seniors buying into what you're doing, it makes it for a di very difficult year. So uh, I couldn't be more excited about the group that we have right now, the senior group we have, Jay and Jen and Amanda Dow. Um, the, the three of them just have just just taken off and embraced our, our coaching staff. And we've had you know over a year now together to build on our relationships together, which is really important uh, with that buy-in. You have to feel a trust and you have to feel a comfort with each other that we were still working through last year. So. Um, to be able to be kind of past that and, and have the relationships that we want to have, that's exciting for us. Is it important, ladies, for expectations coming into this year, knowing kind of what coach expects from you and what you can expect for her, that whole uh, getting used to one another period being behind you? Do you think that helps coming into this year, Jay, as far as you know, smooth, ready for this year and everybody knows they're on the same page and, and are working toward the same goals? Absolutely. It's 
I think it's take a little stress off you because okay. it's like I, if in the beginning it's like I don't know what you expect, mm -hmm. but now it's like I know exactly what you expect and I shouldn't have no problem doing it, pretty much. Jen, does that make it easier this year having all that? getting used to one another period kind of over with as well for you and, and the upperclassmen to kind of know what coach expects from you and what you can expect from her? Yeah, it makes me feel a lot comfortable because like Jay said, it was kind of like you didn't know what to expect last year and now you're coming in this year knowing what coach want this year. So, yeah, I feel I feel a lot comfortable coming in this year. All right, let's 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 get ready for this year. It's 12-13. It's, it's these ladies' last go-round. You've got a pretty challenging schedule, and what's great about it is there aren't really long stretches of period away from home. Uh, you don't have a lot of long home stands, but you, you, you get those periods where road, home, road, home, so you don't have to be from Halton, away from Halton Arena that, uh, for long stretches of time. Let's talk about this year's schedule and kind of the challenges that are laid out for you. We're excited about how the schedule came together. I mean, we, every year our, our uh, goal is to try to put together a schedule that will help prepare us for postseason play, and certainly that's our goal, to be able to make our 11th straight postseason, to be able to contend for an A-10 championship. Uh, we're excited about the non-conference. We think we have a great challenge and a great balance uh, to prepare us for the A-10 and then certainly going into the A-10 being our last year in the league. We want to do really well and I know it's important to these seniors. I know it's important to our team uh, to kind of leave a mark as we as we move from this conference to the next. So, um, you know, it's still going to take a lot of work. You know, like like we've said, it's, it's a marathon, not a sprint. And every day our goal in practice is to get better that day and by the end of the week we should be, feel better after that week and so on and so on and so hopefully then we get to March and you'll see the fruit of all of our labor. labor. A constant pressure, a constant building towards the end of the year. I know you ladies have found a lot of success in the last three years here at Charlotte, some postseason trips as well. We wish nothing but the best for a, for a fourth postseason trip for you, 11 for the program. Thanks a lot for the time. I know uh, it's, it's hard to get you off the court for a half hour, but we do appreciate you coming in and sitting in with us. Best of health to you, and good luck here in year two for you. And, and uh, let's, let's leave a mark on the A-10. Let's, let's, let's make it memorable, huh? Right? Thank you. <laughs> Coach Conswagra, thank you very much for the time. Appreciate Thanks, it. Man. And good luck to uh, two of our seniors, Jay Forney, Jennifer Haley, best of health to you as well. We'd like to see you out on the court there at the end of the year, too. Let's, let's play into March. Let's get into March. That should be fun. Let's get Halton Arena rocking. First home game is Saturday the 10th against uh, North Carolina Central. And you can keep up with us online, www.charlotte49ers.com. Hey, if you're a Twitter fan, go to at C Consuegra, build up her Twitter followers, and we'll be tweeting out at Charlotte49ers as well. I'm Ryan Rose. Thanks for joining us. We will see you in Halton Arena this year. That's our women's basketball closer look. Thanks for watching.